Sam from Sheridan Computers, and I'm going to continue looking at our guide on getting started with Asterisk. Uh, in this part of the guide, we're going to set up some call queues. So, so far, our uh, PBX is doing pretty well. We can make outbound calls, we can receive inbound calls, but what if you're on the phone and um, somebody calls in, it, you can send it to voicemail um, in a company environment, that's not ideal. And if you've got more than one person answering the phone, um, then we should send it to a queue and allow other members of the queue to answer the call. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. If you like this video, please take the time to hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. It does help us. If you hit the notifications icon, you'll receive notifications of any new videos as they are released. If you would like to hire us for any projects, um, head across to our website at sheridan.co.uk and click on the hire us button. So I'm logged in as root and I'm in user local, etc. asterisk. I'm in the configuration files directory for asterisk. Um, we need to create a file called queues.com. Once, once we create that file, asterisk will um, detect it and load the queue information in from it. So there is a sample one that we, uh, when we moved all the samples out of the way, there is a sample queues file in here. So I'm gonna copy the queues.com file into here. And now we can edit our file. Um, this is quite a large file and there's a lot of options that you can set on your queues from uh, periodic announcements to um, the strategy to whether it's ring all or round robin or however you're going to set it. So I'm going to try and do this from a um, minimal point of view. Um, so I'm going to remove all the comment lines out of here. And after we do that, that's basically uh, all we're left with. So persistent members, um, if you create a queue and you don't um, statically assign members to it and you want people to join dynamically, if you restart asterisk, it'll lose information and the members will no longer be a part of the queue. If we do persistent members equal yes, then that persists the uh, queue members across restarts. So when we restart asterisk, it'll still have the same amount of members in a queue. So that's generally a good option that you want in there. And monitor type is the recording type, which defaults to mix monitor in the config, and we're just going to leave that there. I'll go through um, recording in another video further down the line. Um, so under the general section, this basically over is the default settings for all queues. Now, if you want to create settings that you can uh, apply to groups of queues, for example, uh, you can do it using templates. So I'm going to go ahead and create our template here. So I'm going to put default settings. And if we do an exclamation mark in brackets, if you remember from previous videos, that's how we set up a template. And one of the things I want to put in here, I'm going to put music class equals default. We'll go through that later on in another video. Uh, covering cues, but that basically sets the um, default music class. And you can create them so you've got different music playing for different cues, etc. And I'm going to set the queue time out as well. So if I set it to 3600, that basically means that um, people will be able to sit in the queue for an hour before um, before it moves to the next action in the dial plan. So we're going to leave that and we're going to create our next queue. I'm going to do queue support. You don't need the queue at the beginning of it. It's um, I just like to do that so I can identify my queue easily from templates. Uh, and we're going to use the default settings template. Uh, and because we've already got the default settings in here, I'm going to add a static member. And we're going to use member PJ SIP and um, our endpoint that want to be members of this queue. So I'm just going to um, go ahead and copy mine, which you can do from the Asterisk console. Uh, you can do uh, PJ SIP show endpoints and get the MAC addresses as we assigned for them from there. Uh, I'm just going to go and do that real quick. You can look up how to do that in a previous video. Um, I said I've just mentioned how to do it, but I didn't want you to see the username for my SIP trunks, which I've changed um, because I've shown it in the last video. Uh, I had no choice to make the video make sense. Uh, so we called our endpoints by MAC addresses. So I'm putting the MAC address uh, pjsip forward slash MAC address. So pjsip is a technology that we're using, and the MAC address is the name of the endpoint. You might have named it something else. I named them by MAC addresses. Uh, one thing I did recommend was that you do not re uh, rename your endpoints like 201, 202, 203, just makes discovering them quite easily. So that's our queue setup. That file's pretty 
minimal once you remove all the comments out of there. So now we need to go ahead and um, edit our extensions and redirect where the queues are coming in. So to do this, edit our extensions.com. Um, and up here, this is our main telephone number. Um, so when incoming calls come in, at the moment, we're going to our F FXS group and we're going to extension 200. Um, as I say, that's fine if we, you know, if you create a DDI and you want a DDI to go straight to an extension, but if you, uh, if it's for a main number, for example, and you want it to uh, go to a call queue, so other people can pick that up, then we can do that. So in here, I'm going to create, let me do it in a more sensible place. I'm going to create a new context and I'm going to call it queues. And I'm going to do extend, extend, uh, support, one, no, op. So your extension numbers don't need to, your extensions don't need to be numbers. You can define an extension as whatever you want. So I'm doing Q support one. And then I'm going to do Q U E U E for our Q up. So same next step, Q U E U E for our Q up. That's a hard word to spell. <laughs> um, and then we're going to send that to Q support. So when I mentioned the timeout, uh, if we hit three uh, three thousand six hundred seconds, which is an hour, it will enter the next, leave the queue and enter the next point in a dial plan. So you can you can direct into another queue, you can direct into groups of uh, extensions, whatever you want to do. I'm just going to give them congestion after an hour, which will annoy people, uh, and then we'll hang up the call. So now we need to edit this bit here. So instead of going into our FXS group context, we're going to go into our queues context. And uh, I want to go into queue context support number one. And that should be pretty much us done. So queues go to queues support one. We've got in here our context queues support one will do the no op and then it'll queue and send the call straight to the support queue. So that's pretty much it for um, the changes that we need to make. So now I'm going to go ahead and go into asterisk. Uh, and I'm going to do module show like QUE. So it's app Q. I'm just going to go ahead and reload that. Module reload app QUEUE. -E. Um, so that's reloaded. Uh, now it says there's no QRules.conf. That's something that we'll go through in a, another video, in a more enhanced video on queues. So now we should be able to do Q, and as I said, the uh, if you do an exclamation mark, it'll auto complete. So we can do Q, show, and we can see our Q support there. Um, so we've done that, and we can see Q support has zero calls, max unlimited. Um, so you can do max length, and you can specify the amount of people that can sit in a queue. We've got the strategy to ring all. Um, and the members, we can see, uh, I have statically assigned members, so we can see them here. So now if we go ahead and um, call in, we should get our call queue. Uh, no, we won't, because we need to reload the dial plan, because we made changes to the dial plan. Don't know we've done that. Um, invalid database, database specified general. Okay, this is from um, the previous video that we did on um, when we set up the CDR. Um, 
which go to ext config dot conf. Uh, my Q log should not be set to MySQL, it should be set to ODBC. And the connection name should be the connection name that we set up um, previously in that video, so it should be asterisk in there. Uh, let's go ahead and reload that. Okay. Back into the console. If we try that again. Okay. So no errors at that point. Uh, I just double check that. Um, okay, so we can see the telephone number again coming in. Uh, we're going to queue support, um, and that's fine. It seems to have done it. Now it's saying uh, music class default requested, but no music on hold loaded. That's fine. Um, we'll get to that. Be patient. Um, now, if we go into Well, MySQL database, and we use asterisk. Um, don't remember on the previous video, we created um, two tables here. One was CDR, and the other one was QLog. And I did mention that the uh, Q, the queues, um, incoming calls to the queues get logged separately. So if we do select to start from QLog. Um, so you can see that the calls came into the queue, so now the uh, Q log is working properly, and our queues are working fine. So any calls coming into the queues are now logged properly. Um, go ahead and clear that. Okay, so um, we saw the music on old error message saying uh, it wasn't loaded. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick. So if we go to old, and I'm going to copy the music on hold.conf. Now if we edit this file, uh, again, there's a lot of options for what you can set for music on hold. Uh, we'll set the general ones up for this. So uh, let me delete all the comments out of here. So with the comments deleted, we have a general section, which is blank, and we have uh, mode equals files and the directory for where they are, where the music on hold files are. So let's save that. And then uh, just give our extensions.conf an edit. And where's the queue? So we've got our queue here. Um, there's a error in that. We need to answer the call. You always need to answer the incoming calls. So I'm going to put answer. So I'll answer the call before it goes to the queue and then I'm going to put same and uh, ringing and I'll do same and wait two. So it'll answer the phone, it'll say it's ringing, um, so it'll ring for a bit and then we'll get the cue and we should get some music on the whole playing. So let's go back into asterisk. I'm going to do dial plan, reload, and now let's see what happens. So now we have some really terrible music. Um, so we can change the music and I'll go through how to do that in a separate video. But for now we have incoming call queues. Um, 
And if we um, create further extensions and we go into queues.conf, then we can add the members statically here. And I uh, say so I'll go through uh, how to do dynamic queue members in another video. Um, I'm running out of time, I just wanted to get this done. So our PBX now has outbound calls, inbound calls, we've got voicemail, we've got voicemail to email, um, and we've got a call queue for the main incoming line. So when people ring the main line, calls go to the queue, they get some music on hold. Um, as I say, I'll go through how to change that, the music, uh, and how to record your own prompts and stuff in further videos down the line. If you like this video, please uh, hit the like button. Um, consider subscribing to the channel and like I said if you hit the notifications icon you get notifications of any videos as they are done. If you would like to hire us for um, any projects then please head across to our website and click on um, the hire us button.